What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again coming at you with another Talking Head video. Today we're going to be talking about how to most efficiently mine Ethereum and get the money out of Ethereum with paying the least amount of fees, as well as going through some additional strategies to get yourself earning more money with the crypto you have earned mining. This is going to be specifically covering options for United States, as well as specifically covering options for mining Ethereum. We have other coins that we mine, that I mine, and I'm sure you guys mine. I'm hoping that basically because we are talking about Ethereum in this case, it is aimed at more of the newer viewers because that's the popular thing to mine. And if you are, you know, well versed in the crypto community already, you know that there are those special coins you mine and hold, and you probably already know where you should be holding them, i.e. a hardware wallet or a paper wallet, and then holding those things until they are worth some money, you know, like we did with ETH while everybody else was saying it wasn't worth anything. <laughs> you silly noobs. All right, noobs, let's get into it. But before we do, check out the affiliate links down in the description below. I have been using YubiKeys for a while now. They are hardware multi-factor authentication devices to protect your, of course, accounts. So this is gonna be very, very important when you get into crypto because you're gonna wanna make sure that you multi-factor authenticate everything. And hardware multi-factor authentication is significantly more secure than software authentication, such as apps like Authy, or of course the Google Authenticator multi-factor. And never use that SMS authenticator. There are way too many ways to get into it. But the best option and solution I have found has been the YubiKeys. It'll be an Amazon affiliate link down below and we are working on the affiliate link for their official site as well. When purchasing, keep in mind you should buy two, not one, because you will wanna have a backup in case you break, lose, or something fails on your primary device. Keep one in a fireproof safe, maybe get three, keep one, you know, in a safety deposit box. Psh, I wouldn't trust a bank, but you know, apparently everybody thought XRP was a good idea. <laughs> I got all the digs today. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. So when you are mining Ethereum, there's a big thing to take into account and that is network fees. Network fees are at an all time high. This is why mining is profitable. But if you're mining Ethereum and then getting hit with the network fees, you're losing a lot of profit that you don't necessarily have to lose. This is gonna be especially important if you are in a small home farm or you know just mining on a single GPU while you're at work and you want to be able to actually liquidate that Ethereum and get yourself some cold hard cash to go ahead and maybe, I don't know, buy another GPU or another mining rig and you know increase your investment in your assets. That's what you should be doing with it. But you guys are probably gonna buy, I don't know, XRP. Oh, all right, we're done. We're done with that joke, we're, it's over. All right, so one of the strategies that I use is basically mining to the exact wallet I need to mine to, to perform the functionality that I wish to perform with my Ethereum. This comes down in a few different manners. There's going to be cashing out right to fiat and buying more rigs then there is going to be cashing out of course to pay for power costs and then there's going to be trading for other cryptocurrencies so leveraging the ethereum i have to trade into other cryptocurrencies and then there's going to be adding liquidity in uniswap so that i can earn some additional income of course on the ethereum itself and technically not necessarily cashing out ethereum right we have a uniswap video tutorial that will go through the details of uniswap for you of course on this channel and i'll link it down in the description because my dummy 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 can't figure out how to get it functioning 
in the little corner anymore since they changed the whole whatever here on YouTube. The uh, the dashboard, I think, is what they like to call it. So if we're talking about those four strategies. They're all handled a little bit differently, and you need to take note of what you want to do with your cryptocurrency. And you probably want to set up multiple wallets to handle it. But here's the little trick that a lot of people don't talk about. The trick is avoiding network fees by making the mining pool take care of the initial transaction. Action. So if you're mining to a single wallet all the time, and then you're dispersing out your Ethereum from that wallet to say a, an exchange that allows you to cash out for cash or an exchange to trade for other cryptos or sending it over to MetaMask to do some swapping, you're wasting those network fees going between all those wallets. So my first tip is don't mine to the same wallet. You have multiple rigs if in that case right so if you have multiple rigs go ahead and set them up to different wallets yes the payouts might not happen as fast but you're going to be protecting yourself from those network fees so stop paying unnecessary network fees it's ridiculous if we hop in over here though i'm going to give you guys here an idea of how i am reducing the amount of fees on my mining operation in general and that starts all here with hive os why is hive os important well first it's a really easy way to manage all your rigs so hands down, I love it. Affiliate link once again will be down in the description. So check it out if you guys wanna mine the Hive OS or use it as your operating system for mining. They have a few different ways to handle this. It's free if you are under four workers, it doesn't cost you anything. Over four workers, it handles this in one of two ways and it well one of three ways really right so the first way is going to just be a flat fee of three dollars a month per rig over five workers right so five workers or more you have to pay for all your rigs on there or you can pay three percent if you're mining to a hive on pool hive on currently supports ethereum and ethereum classic nothing else However, if you are mining to a high bond pool, there are zero pool fees, which can be pretty enticing for a lot of people. In fact, I've recently switched over and I'm making more on high bond pool. And we can go over that comparison in a different video. I'm still waiting to get a lot of confirmations over time. I needed to put a couple rigs on one to one, but it is looking like we are making more on the Hive on pool currently than we were on ethermine.org, which is quite interesting. Now, additional to that, they handle their structures a lot different, right? You got P PLNS on one and you got PPS plus on Hive on pool. If you're interested in that sort of thing, as far as differences in mining pools, let me know in the comment section below. There are many different payout methods. I'd be happy to make a video on the differences of payout methods down in the description. And coming from somebody that used to run some pools, I have some pretty good insights on those, not only from a miner's perspective, but also from a pool operator's perspective, right? Because it does affect the way your pool functions and can be quite frustrating in some in some circumstances. That aside, really what you're looking at here is $3 a month per rig or 3%. You can adjust it to $3 per rig. Let's say if you have a single rig that's making more than uh, whatever it is, $100 a month, right? On Ethereum, then you can adjust it to to adjust your payment method. Now, if you're on ASIC, it's $2 a month, but we don't do ASIC on this channel. Maybe that changes. If you wanna hear the reason why I don't support ASICs, let me know in the comment section below and we can make an individual video on that. So basically, because I'm able to use both the operating system from Hive OS and their pool Hive On, which also, yes, my Windows rigs go to Hive On Pool because it has zero fees on the pool. I am able to save myself a whole bunch of trouble and fees right there, right off the bat. I'm not paying the mining pool a fee. Now, in addition to that, they pay the fee, and this is true with ethermine.org as well. They pay the fee when they pay out to of course your wallet so what you should see in your wallet 
hopefully, is that if you mined and received however much ETH, one ETH, then one ETH should appear in your wallet, of course. Now down here, you can take a look at different bonuses or discounts for amount of workers, bonuses if you pay up front and so on and so forth. Figure out the size of your farm and then go from there. Suffice to say, if you have four workers or less right now, you should just start using Hive OS and mining, of course, to the Hive on pool because you're going to save the most amount right there. So here's the Hive on pool. You can take a look and then we'll move on. All right, so you're mining right and you're mining on like maybe a single gpu and you want to get the cash out as fast as possible to buy yourself another gpu to increase the amount of assets you have mining ethereum well there's a couple ways to do this for the united states you have things like crypto.com and coinbase if you go to finder.com you can do a comparison between exchanges and so on and find out which one is better or worse personally i use crypto.com and that is for a very specific reason that is because they have the lowest crypto exchange fees for the easiest amount or the easiest way to exchange it straight to fiat now there are no fees for me transferring in and the fees are cheaper for me to move to a different coin like bitcoin right so if you see here zero to fifty thousand dollars the maker taker fees are 0.2 percent that is significantly lower than than coinbase in most instances coinbase is another option the problem is is their fees fluctuate too much for it to be certain and they like to base it off of fiat so you can see here it just keeps going up the more and more you use of course it you it's the same over on crypto.com but it usually ends up being significantly cheaper as far as swapping why would you want to do this well let's say i wanted to put my crypto into uh straight into the account and then convert it straight to fiat and then buy a graphics card well if i am using crypto.com and i have ordered their credit card it's as easy as going into the app clicking top up going on the new egg and buying the graphics card I want. End of story. I don't have to convert even the Ethereum because the Ethereum will top up, uh, will transfer basically straight to Fiat onto the card. There are different levels of cards you can get depending on how much crow you want to stake. And that is something that you should take into to account is that your initial setup of this app is going to cost you some money in basically staking their own little token called crow and you need to basically take that into account for your initial setup however i have found it to work way better than my coinbase account especially because coinbase kind of forces me to do a lot of things if I want to cash out to my bank it doesn't work very well another good thing about crypto.com is it is its own bank and you can essentially convert your money to fiat in the crypto.com app and then you can send a wire transfer which comes from their bank to your bank so you don't get any of those blocked like you're not allowed to do this type thing. Another option that I have used in the past is of course Cash App. Now Cash App fees are a little bit higher of course and you don't have that direct or the, the option to send it via a wire transfer which means you're very limited on the amount you're allow allowed to send and if you do their instant you get screwed by their little instant 2% fee. Very frustrating. Also in the Cash App, if you are sending crypto to the Cash App, that counts towards your daily limit and your weekly limit, as well as when you convert that to fiat, it counts that towards your daily limit. And when you cash it out, it counts it towards your daily and weekly limits. Meaning like if you uh, send $100 to a uh, Bitcoin, it's going to count that hundred dollars three times before it even hits your account and then you're pretty much like if you are sending even something like a thousand dollars you can lock yourself out at a thousand with just trying to move a thousand dollars to your bank really quickly and then on top of that they're going to take two percent of it right away so cash app is really 
not viable. This works a lot better, like I said, because they are, they do have a bank functionality to it. Downsize to using crypto.com. You should not store any crypto in crypto.com. It uses a system that doesn't allow you to control your keys. Not your keys, not your crypto. You guys should be getting this by now. So you should never use crypto.com to store long-term crypto. This is purely so that you can reinvest as quickly as possible if you're in the United States. My strategy for going ahead and utilizing crypto.com to store is purely to move it into something that costs less for me to send. So I'll usually send straight to here and then disperse out between the cryptos I want to, but usually try to find the lowest network fee coin that I can swap to and then use that to send it off to a hardware wallet like Trezor. Most of the time though, I'm just moving it to Bitcoin and then sending it to the Trezor wallet. Now you can do that, you know, in different exchanges, Coinbase will work. Any exchange will pretty much work. So do your homework. And if that's your only goal though, uh, because Ethereum functions, you know, in the Trezor wallets and a lot of the hardware wallets, if you're planning on just mining and holding, go ahead and mine directly to a hardware wallet like Trezor. So we had Coinbase up here. We had crypto.com. You can check out both. Both of them are going to take like one to three days to really get fully set up. So get to work on that now. Crypto.com is my personal suggestion for ease of use. So check out the affiliate link down in the description below. It's actually a referral link and use it to get $25 when signing up and staking some crow. Yes, you will have to stake the crow to get the $25, all right? That's just the way it is. But once you do and you're all set up, this is the easiest way to keep all the ETH fees out of your way. Finally, one of the strategies I use is mining with 30% of my power to MetaMask. Why would I use MetaMask? Because I want to add liquidity. Now, why would I choose the 30% fee number or the 30% number? That's purely me, how much I wanna reinvest. However, I have been taking a look at some of the crypto.com options for, of course, their, their long-term staking stuff. They basically have a way for you to earn interest on loaning out ETH, earn and invest stuff here. Um, they do have higher percentages, but since you don't control the keys, you don't control the wallet, you don't have the crypto actually, I don't trust it. So yes, I'm still going old school and using Uniswap. I say old school, it's pretty new school now. Why would I wanna use Uniswap over that? The, the fees are high, blah, blah, blah. Well, the fees are high, yes, but I'm also adding liquidity. So I add liquidity and then personally, I just wait for that to go up. This is very important because a lot of people don't understand this. The high fees just mean it's good for you if you're adding liquidity. That's why you would want to do it in the Uniswap. You don't want to just be swapping tokens in hopes that that token's going to go up in price. You want to find a good pairing of tokens and you want to add liquidity to them and then you want to leave it there until it's made up more than the fees of adding into the liquidity as well as pulling out of the liquidity. And so it's a longer term thing, but at the same time, you're going to control the keys. So it's not like crypto.com where if you lock up your, your ETH for however long and then crypto.com tanks and you don't have any of the keys, you just lose all that crypto. All right. Uniswap is decentralized, right? You control your keys, you control all that. So even if like Uniswap went away, all the records of the tokens that you own, et cetera, are gonna be tied to that MetaMask wallet. This is important, okay? You need to take all of that sort of thing into account. I do not suggest using the crypto.com earn and invest, okay? I purely only suggest using crypto.com for being able to reinvest into fiat-based assets or to cash out to pay your power bill that's it i don't suggest it for anything else okay 
So that pretty much wraps up how I go ahead and handle uh, all of the mining profitability profits or revenue because it's not necessarily profits, right? You do have the, the cost of the power that you need to pay, but that's how I handle it. It is a little long winded. I didn't write a script for it because these are supposed to be talking head videos. So hopefully you found a nugget of of help or information or something in this video. Finally, yeah, the Trezor wallets, I'll leave an Amazon link down in the description below. Those are your long-term hold options. That's gonna be where you want, most safely gonna be able to store your crypto. Uh, MetaMask is a hot wallet. So if you're gonna store any crypto in, in, in MetaMask, you know, you need to keep into account that it is less secure than if you use something like a Trezor. Even better, something like a paper wallet. But, you know, we're going to start with the easier stuff. And then we do have Trezor guides up on the channel. They're pretty old. They probably need to be updated here. So I'll be taking a look at that shortly. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you next Tuesday.